Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Deck Bricks. I'm Chris, and just recently, I got the chance to go to Atlanta BrickCon. It was an absolutely phenomenal event. We had an absolute blast, and I'm excited to announce that I'll actually be traveling around with the Atlanta BrickCon organizers because there's a lot more tours coming up, and I'll be joining them for those, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's jump into my massive Atlanta BrickCon vlog where we talk about how I got all of this crazy LEGO stuff home, including, yes, that blimp right there, which is an actual prop from episode 8 of LEGO Masters featured for 2K Drive. It was a crazy experience being at the convention. It was actually the very first time I've ever displayed a mock at a convention ever, believe it or not. I've never done it before. I've pretty much only been a guest, so it was really special being able to meet people there, display our LEGO Masters purse, and I'm so excited, so let's jump in right now. Alright folks, buckle in because this is going to be one of the most insane stories of all time. And I say that as somebody who has a lot of crazy tales going on random Lego adventures around the world. Somehow everything seems to go wrong and right at the same time. But this, oh my goodness, just making our way over to Atlanta for Atlanta BrickCon was absolutely nuts. So for those who don't know, Robert and I, my teammate from LEGO Masters, are currently working on a startup and side venture together. And basically, what we had planned was to, well, take the day off work on Friday so we could just take it easy, get a chance to meet some friends, and then we could actually go in and enjoy the convention on Saturday and Sunday. But as you know, things change, and an emergency startup meeting was booked very last minute to occur at around like 1 or 2 p.m. on Friday. Now here's the issue. We were taking a really late flight because obviously we both also have regular jobs at Microsoft so we couldn't really have that be conflicting with our regular work and because of that we were going to be getting in pretty late to Atlanta. Now for me it wasn't too bad. You know I was planned to get into Atlanta at maybe around 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and Robert was supposed to get in about an hour before me, so our plan, which was completely airtight, was Robert was going to go ahead and get our rental car to bring us all the way over to our hotel, which is about an hour drive from the airport, because Atlanta BrickCon isn't really in Atlanta, more on that later, and then it would be ready for me to go, I would pop in, and we would be back to the hotel by midnight. And you know that was already cutting it a little late, but whatever, we would have at least had a few hours of sleep. Now, a few things managed to change because of this. Well, first of all, our emergency startup meeting getting booked on the day of Friday meant that I had to accelerate all of my plans to meet up with all of my friends on Friday. In the beginning, it was supposed to be just a very chill morning. I was going to meet up with some folks from the Bionicle community like King K, aka Brian, and go around the airport together as well as have lunch and maybe hit up Atlanta Brick Co. Also meet Jonathan, aka Mini Superheroes today, hang out with him. You know, we were going to have a slow start, get up at like 8, 9 a.m. and meet people at 10. But then because the meeting got booked, I had to accelerate everything to then be a 7 a.m. pickup at my hotel just to make it to the aquarium on time to be able to meet up with my friends. Because here's the thing, if I promise to meet friends somewhere, I'm not going to cancel even if a really, really crazy thing came up. It would have to be a crazy reason to cancel. And I already promised, and I know that some folks even were taken off work to meet up, so I was like, no, I'm not going to force people. I'm not going to ditch last minute and say, hey, sorry, something came up. I can't hang out today. We will just, however, ask to meet a lot earlier. So then my sleeping time was significantly diminished, but I was like, okay, fine. I get in at midnight to the hotel, that's fine. Like six and a half hours of sleep, that's more than I usually get. <laughs> oh boy, oh man, <laughs> just you wait. So spoiler alert for what we're about to cover in this video, we got to the hotel at 5 a.m. and let me explain why. So first off, Robert calls me right as I'm about to board my flight and he's like, hey, I forgot my charger. My phone's about to die. It's at 1%, but uh, by the way, my flight's delayed. Also, can you wait for me at the airport? I don't know how long it's gonna be delayed, but, but dude, just wait for me because I'm gonna be way too sleepy to drive myself to the hotel. And I was like, okay. Sure, but can you like text me with any updates? And he's like, no, my phone is about to die. And that was the last I heard of our guy for hours. Now you would think that Robert would, being the responsible individual he is, pack a phone charger, but no, no, no. He, he for whatever reason, chose not to pack one on this trip. And so I get to the airport and it's like 11 p.m. 
And I'm just sitting there, and I start to sit, and I'm waiting and waiting for Robert. And so I look up, like, all the flights going from New York, and I see that, like, the one that I'm presuming he's on gets in at around 2 a.m. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, well, anyway, I got a lot of work to do. Might as well get some work done. During that flight, I had planned to get that work done so that I could just sleep. However, I did not get the work I had planned to get done during the flight because more work came up right before the flight pertaining to our startup that I spent literally the entire flight on call doing. So that was absolutely crazy. I had to like get my actual personal work done after landing so I couldn't even nap. And here's the thing, if I wanted to nap, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I would have. I had packed a couple of luggages, checked in just to make sure that I would have enough room to bring back a ton of Lego, and just as I was about to leave my luggages kind of right outside the restroom and walk in the restroom and use it and, and kind of take my time, someone runs up to me and they're like, hey, have you seen like this and this guy? He just swiped my purse and ran. So obviously, I am no longer going to be leaving my luggages out of sight anywhere, and I am just going to not use the restroom and sit and wait for Robert. So anyway, I get my work done. 2 a.m. comes, Rob arrives, and the madness begins. So first and foremost, I'm like, Rob, I have been waiting here for four hours, and I really need to use the restroom. Let me go use it, watch my luggages, and as you would imagine, just my luck, I go to the one restroom that I could find, and as it turns out, the men's restroom was closed for renovation. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'll just go to the next one. You know, I'll find a different one at the airport. I sprint to the next one, cross the airport for the next restroom, and guess what? As you may probably be able to guess, also under renovation. So at this point, I'm like, dude, whatever. I'm just going to use it when we get to the rental car place. Let's just go pick up our car. Then came the huge problem. It is 2 a.m., and we're looking around, following the signs for the rental car place, and we get to this hallway that's completely blocked off because, as you may know, if you have flown into the Atlanta airport anytime recently, or at least from what I hear from locals, anytime at all, it was under heavy construction, which meant that the path to the rental car place was completely blocked off. And we were like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. Let's try to find another way. Eventually, we're wandering around, and we pick up a posse of literally 10 people. I kid you not. We're wandering around. We find, like, 10 other people also looking for the rental car place, completely lost. Nobody is around to help. So there's this, like, whole posse of us just wandering around. And at one point, I'm like, guys, let's just pull up Google Maps and see how we can get there. Eventually, we find the air train and make our way over to the rental car place because all the signs are pointing in the wrong way due to the construction, but that burned like 45 minutes. So now it's 2.45 a.m. By the time we get to the rental car place, it's 3 a.m., so we'd waste an hour, and I'm like, oh my god, okay, Robert, get the car. I just really need to use the restroom. <laughs> oh, you would not believe it. <laughs> you would not believe it because the restroom at the rental car place, specifically the men's restroom, is, believe it or not, closed for renovation. So this, like, by then, I'm like, okay, the universe does not want me to use the restroom tonight, and it instead wants me to have a great big accident in the car, and you know what, that will be Robert's fault to clean up, because the rental car is under his name, and he's caused me enough stress already. So you know what, that's going to be his problem. So anyway... Anyway, I leave Robert to his own devices for, for like five minutes. I kid you not, I was gone for five minutes. I come back to him, he's like, yeah, I'm ready to go, let's go. So I'm like, okay, great. They tell us to get one particular car in the parking spot, so I get the car, I start driving because Robert was too tired to drive, and we go out of the parking lot, we, we circle all the way down, and as we're about to pull out, the person stops us, and she's like, hey, where's your rental car contract? I look over to Robert, and he's like, oh my god, my guy, I lost it. Somehow in the five minutes I left to look for the restroom, Robert lost the contract for the rental car. So he could not find it anywhere. We checked his bag, we checked his computer, we checked all around the car, nope, nothing. And she was like, well, I can't let you leave without it, so you have to go back and get the contract. So we go back, we turn around, I drive us back, Robert goes, gets the contract, and brings it, and we turn around, go all the way back down, and try to leave. Oh, you might think this is over. No, no, we're just getting started. Because lo and behold, the person at the rental car place was, Oh, um, you were given a rental car that's actually meant to be for Uber drivers only. Are you Uber drivers? 
And so the answer to that was no. And she was like, okay, well, you can't use this car. Sorry. Go ask them for another one. So I'm like... Okay, uh, sure. We turn around again. We go ask the guy at the desk and he's like, Oh, really? It's gonna take me a while to find you another car. So we sit there for 20 more minutes as the bro like cooks on his computer. 20 minutes pass. By this point, it's already almost 4 a.m. We finally fire 3, 3.30ish. We finally get the car. We leave. And then we drive all the way over from the airport to the hotel and get to the hotel at 5 a.m. So we get to the hotel at 5, we go in, and the person at the check-in desk was like, Oh, I marked you guys down as a no-show, because y'all were supposed to be here five hours ago. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm well aware of the fact that we were supposed to be here five hours ago. But anyways, by the time I shower and get ready for bed, it's already like 6 a.m. And so I think I got less than an hour of sleep. I'm pretty sure I got 45 minutes of sleep before what may have been one of the most important meetings of like our entire startup adventure the next day. I mean, let's just look at our mental state during this time right now. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. All right, King. What what time is it? It's, it's four. It's, it's, no, it's not. It's, it's 4.23. <laughs> My guy. I'm getting literally an hour of sleep, but we made it to Atlanta and we're going to BrickCon today in a few hours. Thankfully, by the next morning, things got a lot better because first on the docket was the Atlanta Aquarium. And I want to give a huge shout out to my friend, Brian, one of the greatest 3D modelers in the Bionicle community, who's local to the area for picking me up at my hotel very early upon request and driving me over to the aquarium and also meeting up with my friend, Jonathan. This was a ton of fun because we got to explore the aquarium together. Apparently it's one of the best aquariums in the US and I can totally believe that because I saw some stuff there that was absolutely mind blowing. It was really cool just to hang out with my friends and check it out. Unfortunately, Robert did have work to do, so we put him to work at the hotel and he didn't get to come with us. Now he says that, but bro was dead asleep when I left, so I'm not sure if he had work to do or if he was just napping, but you know, Robert, if you're watching this video, defend yourself in the comments, but hey, dude, I, I, you can't defend losing the contract. I'm gonna roast you for that. Like, you're never hearing that down. But anyways, we went around the aquarium. It was super cool because we got to see a ton of really large fish and sharks. I also realized we're like 10 minutes into this video of my Atlanta BrickCon vlog and we haven't said like there's been no mention of Lego yet. I promise it's coming and you know what this is going to be a crazy story so I'll put a timestamp at the top if you want to jump to the Lego stuff but you know if you're watching a Duck Bricks video you're here for the vibes you know you're here for the the crazy adventures and the fun times and not necessarily here for just the Lego content, so I do appreciate all of you. But anyways, we're going around the aquarium. They had whale sharks, which was really, really cool. Never seen one that close. And it was just a really fun time in general to hang out with all my friends. Let's check out though, because afterwards, right as we were leaving the aquarium, we headed on over to Atlanta Brick Co. All right, so we're here at Atlanta hey. Brickco here with King K from the Bionicle hey. community. Of course, Jonathan, mini superheroes today. I'm so excited because I've literally only been here once and it was in between filming the finale of Lego Masters. So I was a bit stressed then. I didn't get to see that much, but now we're gonna go and see everything. No stress this time, we're in for a treat. It's and you told great. me there's something exciting, isn't oh, there? Yeah, it's right when we walk in, your mind's gonna be blown. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're here at the biggest used Lego store in the entire country, Atlanta Brickco. I'm so excited. Let's do this. And that is gonna be a completely separate video on its own because you see Atlanta Brickco is the largest used Lego store in the US. It's probably the largest in the world. I don't know if there is a larger one. I'm actually pretty confident in saying it is the largest in the world. Like if there was a bigger one, I would know and I would have gone. So I'm gonna say, until someone corrects me in the comments, it's the largest in the world. Now I'm sure someone's BrickLink store is bigger inventory than it, but it was the largest like open store in the world. So very, very cool experience. Got to see a ton of cool things there, and that is a completely separate video because I managed to get some pretty crazy stuff there. The one thing that's relevant for this video is that I was able to get an actual prop that was appearing on LEGO Masters Season 4 from the 2K Drive car racing episode. 
It was barely shown in the corner of the screen for like a small segment of the episode itself, but I distinctly remember it because it was blocking my view during the race the entire time. It's this gigantic Lego blimp, so I said I had to get like the bane of my existence that episode. Just had to bring it home. So. I was able to work out a deal with Atlanta Brickco to get it. More details on that deal and basically how I was able to bring it home in that separate video, but that was a ton of fun. And I wasn't the only one making giant sized Lego purchases because Jonathan also got this gigantic cardboard cutout of Black Widow in minifigure form. Very interesting, very, very interesting store display. I think he's collecting all of the Marvel ones. So that was really cool to see. And from there, we got a chance to have some delicious Korean barbecue at one of the local Korean barbecue restaurants, which was recommended by not only Brian, but also my friend from college, Ruby, who's a very, very big expert on Korean cuisine and food. So that's how I knew this was going to be good. And thankfully, Rob was actually able to join us for a very late lunch after he got done with all of his work meetings. From there, I actually got a chance to check out the convention a little bit. I only had a little bit of time before I was going to meet up with my old friend, but I obviously had to go check out New Hashima being set up. If you don't know what that is, it basically is this gigantic cyberpunk city layout. I first saw snippets of it in probably the biggest forum ever in Brickworld Chicago last year, and this one was a little bit smaller than that layout, but it was still really, really cool. I got a chance to take so many cool photos of the interiors and all the close-up of the buildings, and also get a chance to hang out more with Mark and Steven, the winners of LEGO Masters Season 2, and see even one of their builds put into the modules itself, which was really cool to see. This is honestly probably the greatest LEGO creation I've seen maybe ever. Like, this is probably the best mock that I've seen in my life, especially in person. It's a collaboration of dozens of different people, and there's a lot more to say about that, so we're gonna take a closer look at it when we get to the World of Lights, which is when they actually turn off all the lights in the convention hall and let people see it all lit up. But moving on from that, we got a chance to go on over to see Mark and Steven's incredible Rock Raiders build. Rock Raiders is one of my favorite classic Lego sub-themes, and this was so, so cool seeing so many different, kind of more modernized versions of the Rock Raiders vehicles, but still very recognizable as to what they were supposed to be. Let's take a closer look at that right now. This right here is probably one of my favorite mocks that I've been able to see made by, of course, the other LEGO Masters because this is Rock Raiders themed. Let's check it out. But after I got a chance to take this close-up look at this really, really amazing Rock Raiders mock, which at the time of recording this video and the time this is published is unfortunately now taken apart because they have to recycle the parts into the next mock, which is tragic to me. I know if I ever built something as amazing like this, I would never take it apart. But hey, you know that's a true sign of a master Lego builder when you build something as cool as this, and then you're like, yeah, okay, I'll take it apart and build something else. You know, I, I could never, but I respect it because this is so, so cool. From there, I somehow managed a good old friend from college, Ruby, to drive all the way out to the convention to get a sneak peek of the LEGO craziness, despite not really being that into LEGO herself. So thank you, Ruby, for coming out. And yes, she got to hold the LEGO purse. This is not the original one, but a replica that I've made of the original purse I made on LEGO Masters. And it was really cool being able to show it to some of my friends. From there, I actually got a chance to meet up with a great friend of mine from college, Ruby, and she got a chance to hold the purse, which was really great. This was actually a replica of the purse that I built on LEGO Masters, so that was really cool. Enjoyed a delicious meal, just like good old times, and soon enough, it was time to sleep. I think I got home at like midnight again because we were hanging out. So again, I was running on, I don't know how, actually, I don't know how I managed this. I was running on less than an hour of sleep. Honestly, huge kudos to me. I look exhausted. Like my batteries are dead in every photo here. But you know, I was powering through. I managed to make it through. And when I got home, of course, I had to greet good old Rob. Make sure he was still alive. You know, do, do, the, do the whole like, just make sure Robert is still breathing test as I often have to do when we stay in the same place. And, and thankfully he was still alive, so I, I couldn't just take all of his earthly possessions. But the next morning, we got up bright and early to head on over to the convention. And this was a ton of fun because 
I, it's been a while since I've been to a LEGO convention. I think the last one that I went to was Scarebeck Fan Weekend in Bill and Denmark last September. So it was actually quite a long time since I actually got a chance to visit a LEGO convention. And this one was definitely one of the best ones I've ever been to. In fact, I loved it so much that I actually am in talks with the organizers and we will be appearing at many of their other future conventions this summer, which is going to be so, so much fun. Of course, got a chance to meet up with my boy, Cool Guy Dom. Always a pleasure to meet him and hang out at LEGO events and conventions, which was really, really cool. And I also just got a chance to meet a ton of other people and really just meet and greet fans. Now, here's the thing. We actually did have a full-on panel set up, and that was pretty crazy because not only do we have a panel, but we actually had a whole table where people could meet us. And I'm going to be honest, it was... A little overwhelming, but in the best way possible, because you see, I was standing at our table for probably six or seven hours straight. I did not eat lunch. I did not take any breaks. I didn't even leave to look around at the convention. Robert did, thankfully, so that's where a lot of the footage of the mocks comes from. But for the most part, I was just standing there saying hi to people, doing meet and greets, letting them hold the purses and taking photos, and it was completely one of the craziest experiences ever like seriously I took a time lapse of of certain points of the meet and greet this wasn't all of it but it was just only when I kind of had my phone off to the side and that was so much fun seriously I love doing these because I love meeting folks who are fans of Lego Masters especially folks who are fans of duck bricks and just people who are fans of Lego in general I was handing out specialized Lego Masters trading cards and I was totally stupid and dumb because I only bought 500, and when I bought 500, Emily, who also appeared in LEGO Masters, was like, dude, you should be buying like 5,000, what are you doing? I was like, no, 500? It's gonna last me the whole year. Yeah, so I ran out of all 500 at this event, so da doy. Uh, yeah, obviously, so I'm buying a lot more now, but that was very funny how I went in. I was like, okay, I'm definitely not going to meet 500 people, and I ended up running out and then just running out of things to give people by the end. So. That was absolutely crazy, but that wasn't all because I actually got a chance to be on not one, not two, but three panels, two separate LEGO Masters panels where we went up with LEGO Masters Season 2 winners Mark and Steven and got a chance to do a lot of really fun conversations and talking about our time on the show and builds and favorite themes. And I also got to do a LEGO Influencers panel where I went up with a ton of other huge LEGO influencers like Maticus, Cool Guy Dom, as well as so many other folks and just hang out with them and answer questions. I did try to record all of the panels, but rather tragically, the audio came out to be completely garbled there is no way you're making out any word ever said by any of us so unfortunately that wasn't possible I don't really know how I'm gonna rectify that next time like maybe I'll just bring a, a microphone and put it near me for the panel I did also ask the convention host and organizers to actually try to record the panels in the future so I'm sure they'll probably have a much better time than me because I set up my phone and that was not cutting it for the audio as I was doing all of these panels, meet and greets, and taking photos of the mocks, Robert enjoyed some delicious chicken tenders. I was very jealous because I hadn't eaten anything all day. Moving onwards from that though, we got a chance to do a ton of other really cool stuff and check out the mocks, and this to me was probably... Maybe not my favorite, because my favorite mock was New Hashima, but my second favorite mock at the entire convention was this entire castle dedicated to the LEGO Fright Nights. If you don't know what Fright Nights are, they were the sub-theme of LEGO Castle that featured Basil the Batlord, Willa the Witch, all the dragons, and these kind of almost vampire-like aesthetics to all of them. Obviously, we did just get the new Basil the Batlord as a collectible minifigure earlier this year, so this was so cool to just take in and see all of the details absolutely insane to me to see the amount of truly talented effort that went into making the rock work of this castle all of the different minifigures posed around the aesthetic the dark grays the light grays the reds the blacks the transparent red windows the rock work of the way the castle was perched on the mountain oh my goodness i could just gush about this build for so so long because this was easily one of the coolest things I saw. But again, every single mock here was just so, so amazing, and I had a great time going around and taking photos of all of these incredible builds. Interspersed in my camera roll are Robert seeming to enjoy some more snacks while I was going around. 
I'm so jealous. Why are all of his photos just of food? My guy, what are you doing? Anyways, moving on from that, one of the favorite builds that I saw there was this complete one-to-one -one recreation of the cancelled LEGO Seatron theme, complete with working monorail. This was the original concept behind what would eventually become LEGO AquaZone, but it was revealed in a Brick Journal magazine years ago, and it was really cool to see them actually put a lot of effort into recreating this cancelled LEGO theme. I never thought I would see this physically before, and now I really want to make it myself. We'll see maybe that could be a fun project to do in the future but this was so cool to see this cancelled lego concept come to life Moving on from that, my favorite space sub-theme is LEGO Blacktron, so it was really cool to see a Blacktron-focused mock there. I wish I had more time to really just go in-depth into the details of that, but I think I'll have some more footage coming up later in this video because I do remember spending a lot more time taking a look at that. But then of course it was time for this incredible banquet, and when I say that this banquet surpassed all expectations, I do not say that lightly. Now to be fair, I was probably very biased because again, I was running on maybe, well it was like one hour of night of sleep the night before this, and then maybe at max like six hours of sleep this night, so across three days I was running on like seven hours of sleep. I had also not eaten anything all day, so to me having an all you can eat buffet banquet hosted by the convention organizers with a near unlimited supply of clearly the most healthy food that could be mustered. From chicken tenders, to pasta, to chicken on a stick, to chicken nuggets, to chicken, to fried chicken, all sorts of chicken. Oh my goodness, so good. I think I ate three plates worth of food and it was so much fun because we also got to compete in Lego trivia. Now here, here's the thing. You know, Duck Bricks, Duck Bricks is not a sore loser. Duck Bricks is, is not a sore winner. He's a very happy winner. But is he a sore loser? I mean, Duck Bricks is sometimes a loser. He's rarely a loser. But here's the thing, okay? Let me just say, everyone who knows, knows I'm the best at LEGO trivia. Nobody can defeat me in real LEGO trivia. But these questions, man, I don't know about these questions. You know, they were asking how many pieces were in this mock. All I will say is... How am I supposed to know how many pieces are in one mock? Very disappointing. Very disappointing, these LEGO trivia questions. You know, they should hire me to run it instead. We will make LEGO trivia great again in the future convention by having me, Duck Bricks, as the host. So unfortunately, I did not win LEGO trivia. I think I placed like fourth or fifth. I wasn't even on the top three. You know, it was embarrassing. Because the sad thing was, I was winning for a lot of it, and then we legitimately got a lot of questions that were just... What exact date was the LEGO patent filed? Like, the 24th, 25th, 26th, or 27th of January? And then, like, two of the other questions were like, Alright, how many pieces do you think is in this mock? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. So, unfortunately, I did not make it. I did actually learn a couple of really interesting things, though. There were things in that LEGO trivia that I genuinely didn't know. And, and for real, joking aside, no shade to the folks behind setting up this trivia. Like, it was a really fun event. However... I was very inspired to host my own LEGO trivia because of that. And so what I have done is I've written 40 questions of LEGO trivia, which I believe to be the hardest LEGO trivia ever. Impossible difficulty. I mean, let me just read off some of these questions, right? In 2009, LEGO launched Power Miners, featuring miners delving deep underground and battling crystal-eating rock monsters. However, early concepts for the story featured a completely different opponent. Which was it? So that's a question as well as here's another question. Uh, let's see. Which Lego set had to be pulled from shelves and retooled after a comic in the instructions depicted the plane in the set bombing a city? So that's another one. And one more question is, what was the internal code name for the top secret project Lego embarked on in the early 2000s to refocus on the action figure market, resulting in the failure that was Lego Galador? So I've put together questions like that that I think that, okay, probably like if you're watching this video, I'm sure that a good amount of people know, but there's just so many varied questions in here that I don't think it's possible for any one person to get everything right, aside from, from Giga Chad Duckbricks, of course. 
Of course, of course. If you get every question right in my insane LEGO trivia, which I will host live on YouTube at some point in the future, you will get this, like, probably an insane prize. We'll have to wait and see. I need to figure out the logistics. But that's really exciting. And I also talked to the, the organizers of the convention, and I'm excited to announce that I will be hosting LEGO Trivia Live for convention attendees in person for the future LEGO conventions. So just you wait, because my LEGO Trivia hosting dream is actually going to happen. Anyway, congrats to Maticus Bricks for winning this totally not rigged and not unfair LEGO trivia. I hope you enjoy your set. Congratulations. As you can see, Duck Bricks never, never is a sore loser. I'm, I'm a sore winner because I always win. But after that, we of course got a chance to meet up with all of the other LEGO Masters we had at the event, which was a surprisingly high turnout. Like, this was a pretty crazy amount of LEGO Masters that we actually got to appear here, so that was a ton of fun. And then, it was our chance to explore the World of Lights at the LEGO convention. Now the World of Lights is a time in every LEGO convention where basically they turn off the lights, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and they turn on all of the lights in the mocks themselves. And this was so much fun because this is probably really a chance for all of the individual mocks to truly shine. And obviously I spent a lot of time just focusing on a ton of these mocks earlier in the video and taking a look at what they looked like actually in person with all the lights on, but it's a completely different effect to actually have the lights off and to really be able to explore the mocks themselves. Now. I took so many amazing photos and videos, and again, we're kind of just going to take this time to let the slideshow play through, and for you to be able to enjoy this look at some of the incredible builds featured in this particular section of the display. Some of my favorites being that Rock Raiders mock, of course, New Hashima, as well as a gigantic layout dedicated to Mars Mission, which is one of my favorite LEGO space sub-themes ever. It was just so, so cool. And I finally got to meet Brixar too. Yo, that was awesome. I didn't even know he was gonna be there. Very, very cool to meet him in person. When it comes to looking at the mocks and custom LEGO creations, this is probably my favorite part of every LEGO convention. So I'm just gonna let the images and videos play for a bit while you soak it all in because my goal was to make it kind of feel like you were in the same room with us, experiencing it because I feel like this is what really should be shared because it's so, so cool.
But after that very long day, it was time to... Oh, oh you think I was going back to the hotel to rest? Oh, <laughs> my guys and girls and people, this is a Duck Bricks video. Oh, no, no, no. This was not time to rest because it was time for the after party. Of course, the best part of every LEGO convention is the infamous after party that's held at somebody's house or hotel room afterwards. And thankfully, we were able to be hosted by one of my favorite folks in the LEGO community, Ant Bandit. Now, this was a ton of fun because... Of course, there was karaoke, there was a new rivalry being born between myself and m and Productions, there was a build competition where my wonderful duck should have won but was robbed of its win. Uh, again, totally not rigged, I, I don't know how that happened. Very disappointing, did not win again, but uh, you know, it's uh, Duck Bricks only loses rigged competitions, so... Who, who's to say what was really happening in this competition? But there was an animal building competition, as you can see here. But then moving on from that, that was a ton of fun that night. Of course, one of my favorite memories is singing the Weekend Whip again with Cool Guy Dom. Of course, of course. I feel like at every LEGO convention, it now has to be a tradition to sing the Weekend Whip. So that was a great time. I think I got home at like, I don't know, 2 a.m. And we were back at the convention at 8 a.m. the next day. So, so again, didn't get a ton of sleep, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it, it is, it is definitely the Lego convention life. And in the hotel that morning, we enjoyed a breakfast that was very reminiscent of the breakfast that we ate while filming for Lego Masters in Atlanta. Almost as if the hotel was the same one. Oh boy, brought back some memories for sure. But the first thing I saw when we got back to the hotel was this really cool display of LEGO Hero Factory figures. You see a lot of Bionicle mocks often, but you don't often see LEGO Hero Factory displays. So I thought it was really cool to see just so many different Hero Factory characters on display. Very, very cool to see a lineup of all the villains as well, which was super interesting seeing revamps of all of these characters. I had a great time because I grew up on Hero Factory and so of course this was very nostalgic to me and it was also really cool seeing all of these different Bionicle mocks even a Slicer mock which showcased every single one of the discs in one display which I am actually working on recreating because when I saw this I was like oh my god I need to have that on my wall so I am in the process of purchasing all the Slicer discs and making a layout very similar to this to put on display because this is so so cool very inspired and I wish that I got the name of the original creator if you are the creator and you see this I would love to reach out and credit you because that was so so cool and I love to talk more because I'm trying to make it myself and moving on from that, we got a chance to see this incredible LEGO classic space and kind of retro futuristic space display. I really love this kind of close-up of the space police harassing aliens in true space police fashion. We also got to see recolors of the brand new Interstellar Starfighter, which has been made by a previous contestant on LEGO Masters Season 1, Aaron, which was really cool to see so many different colors of this really fantastic small build that just came out. Of course, I got a chance to talk to the folks over at Bricker builds as well and there will be great things in the works with me and Bricker Builds so stay tuned for that because I'm so excited to work together more with them and then it was back to the meet and greet grind where I got to sign so many interesting things somebody actually brought these are so cool somebody brought a duck bricks duck brick built out of bricks as well as a Lego Masters World Wonderliner plane so that was really special I really enjoyed being able to see that I got to see of course look around at all the vendors and just take a look at some of the other mocks and hang out with some of the other folks who were on my season of LEGO Masters, which was a ton of fun. But soon enough, it was very close to having us need to go home because I have work on Monday and we had to get back to Seattle. Well, I had to get back to Seattle. Robert had to get back to New York. So after taking a ton of photos at the event and saying goodbye and doing one last panel with the other LEGO Masters, it was time to go on home. But then we get to the part in every Duck Bricks video where we're like, okay, how on earth did I get these home? Because at Atlanta Brickco, not only did I get a ton of sets, which I'll be covering in my vlog coming out soon, but I also got that gigantic blimp as well as a Wolfpack shield. So let's look at my reaction right now. And that's Atlanta BrickCon wrapped. Here's my luggages. And yes, if you're wondering, how am I getting this home? I don't know. That is a problem for me in 30 minutes, not now. For now, we go to the airport.
The first stop was Home Depot. Robert was very kind to come along and try to help me package all of this nonsense up. As you can see, he was very enthused by the idea of spending the rest of his afternoon helping me pack this up. But let's see how good of a job I was able to do to pack this. Wow, nice box, Chris. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm doing an expert packing job here. We're gonna... This looks obscene. <laughs> We're gonna ship this bad boy back to Seattle. Sealing the crack. Yes, I'm sealing all the cracks. You know, we're gonna put some tape around to be safe. And, uh, you know, this is not nearly as bad as what we had to do in Denmark. Haven't so. even paid for it yet. <laughs> we'll pay for it when we're done. Chris was struggling with the tape for quite some time. No, no, I was not. Chris was not. Duck, duck Bricks, I'm sorry, you refer to me as my legal name, Duck Bricks, please. Uh, duck Bricks was not struggling with the tape. <laughs> Chris smuggling a thermonuclear Yo, bomb. The missile, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. The missile Destroyer fits, of budgets. Destro yes, the destroyer of budgets. Missile fits, wolf pack shield. That's also go, oh, look, uh, dude, I can throw, I can throw so much more stuff in here. Yeah. I should have bought more. Yeah, I should have bought more. Yeah. Look at all the space there is. And don't forget this bad boy right here. Oh, wow. Easy, easy gaming. This is gonna ship beautifully. I don't know anybody who can ship better than me. Duck Bricks has the best shipping facilities out there. Let's see how this works. Uh. <laughs> no, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Mr. Frodo. <laughs> The clunk. Expert, expert, Ex packing expert, job. Packing. expert. <laughs> With Shelob wrapping up Frodo all the way in the spider silk, the package was ready to go, and let's drop it off at the post office right now. So we made it to the like only open UPS store around, and we go in, and as it turns out, it is not in fact open. So um, yeah, I don't know how we're getting this one back, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Our flight leaves pretty soon too, so it's gonna be a crazy hassle. Rob, how much is this gonna cost to ship? Uh, 250. 250, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's light. It is light. It is light. So that was actually a little bit easier than I thought it would be. Thankfully, the post office just kind of took it and was like, yeah, we'll package this for you. You're good to go and let us go. It cost me like 300 or maybe even $400 to ship home. So it was a lot. It was a lot to ship home, but you know, it was worth it, I think, just to be able to bring it home. And after finally enjoying one last meal at a delicious restaurant recommended to me by uh, Brian as well as my friend Ruby, I made it back home to Seattle, and it was time to rest, relax, and well, prepare for my next meet and greet event the very next weekend. Atlanta BrickCon, like pretty much every LEGO convention I go to, was full of all sorts of crazy fun memories, fun times, experiences, and just some of the best laughters and memories shared and just funny LEGO moments with all of my LEGO friends. Honestly, this is why I love doing what I do. I mean, I love meeting folks. I love just hanging out with people and just getting a chance to see all my friends again and have fun and meet new people as well. It was just such a fun time and I had an absolute blast. This was one of the best LEGO convention experiences of all time. The organizers were really, really great as well. The organizers really made sure that we were doing okay. They were highly recommending for me to go and take a lunch break, even though I was very stubborn and I wasn't. But it was just so much fun and I cannot wait to see what's gonna happen in the future because so much more is to come. That's all for this Atlanta BrickCon crazy adventure video and stay tuned because I'll be putting out more videos on Atlanta BrickCo and so much more coming very soon. All right, and with that, we have summed up our experience at Atlanta BrickCon. Definitely stay tuned because I'll be going to a lot of the other conventions later this year. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. And bye for now. I'll see you at the future conventions.